Hello everyone, today we are going to learn about phase transition. The phase transition is defined as the changes in the physical state of materials, including food components, which will give a notable impact on their physical properties. There are some common phase transition phenomena that happen all the time in our daily lives, which include starch gelatinization and retrogradation, melting and crystallization, and protein denaturation. The three basic physical states in food are solid, liquid, and gaseous. Besides that, there are some other physical states of food in terms of ingredient mobility which are crystals, amorphous rubbery, and glassy state. In this video, we will be focusing on two main phase transition phenomena which are starch gelatinization and retrogradation. Now, we will be talking about gelatinization. The main food component that is involved in gelatinization is starch. Starch is a complex carbohydrate and it is commonly found in rice, cereals, flour, cornstarch and bread. There are two main types of polymers found within a starch granule which are amylose and amylopectin. Starch is known as a semi-crystalline material because it consists of both crystalline and amorphous regions. The crystalline region is predominantly made up of amylopectin, which the outer branches are hydrogen bonded to each other to form crystallites that unravel during gelatinization. The amorphous region of granules is mainly composed of amylose and amylopectin branch point. Now, we will be looking into the principle of gelatinization. Gelatinization is the process that involves disruption of molecular order within the starch granules as a result of heating in water. Without heat applied, Starch is insoluble in cold water and it will form a suspension. In contrast, when starch is heated in water, granule will absorb water and swell. The absorption of water by the amorphous region within the granule will destabilize their crystalline structure. Besides that, it will also cause the amylose to leach out within the granules and cause an increase in viscosity. When the starch is gelatinized, the ordered crystalline state of the starch will change to disordered amorphous state. Hence, the viscosity increase. This alteration will cause irreversible swelling, loss of biofringens, and reduced crystallinity. The temperature at which granules loses their biofringens is referred to as gelatinization temperature. Gelatinization temperature often occurs in temperature ranging from 55 to 75 degrees Celsius. Starch gelatinization is important in food industry such as the formation of normal bread crumb structure in bread. Besides that, the gel formed from gelatinization is also widely used in sauce, puddings, cream, and other food to produce a pleasant texture. Starch gelatinization is often accompanied by retrogradation upon stalling and cooling. In retrogradation, the paste and gel formed during gelatinization will revert back to the insoluble form on freezing and aging, resulting in a change in food texture. Upon cooling and storage, retrogradation will take place and the amylose that is leached out from the granules will line up to form a highly ordered crystalline structure. They form the crystalline region by joining together through hydrogen bonding. This process will remove the water that found in between of the highly ordered structure 
so that the linear portion of the amylose can crystallize. Retrogradation will often give an adverse effect to the food, such as the staling of bread. In addition, have you ever wondered why there is a liquid layer separated from jam, pudding, jellies, and sauces on the shelf of the supermarket? Whenever we see there is a liquid layer separated from those foods, we will automatically perceive those foods as bad quality. Cinerosis is the major culprit behind all these undesirable phenomena. Cinerosis means the ripping of water from cooked and crude starch, or separation of liquid from a gel upon standing caused by retrogradation. Cinerosis is the most common phenomenon that happens in a pudding. The main ingredient in pudding is carrageenan, which is a type of polysaccharides. When the pudding is allowed to stand for a long period, Cinerosis will begin to take place as the crystallization of polysaccharides will expel the water in between them. Besides that, some of us might also experience watching helplessly as the filling of the lemon marine pine begins to rip moisture and fail to hold its shape when it is served. The best way to tackle and control cinerosis is by using modified starch. For example, pre-gelatinized starch is used in instant pudding mix to prevent cinerosis. Besides that, modified starch can also be used to slow down the process of retrogradation and cinerosis. The modification of starch often involves the disruption in the tendency of the linear molecules to retrograde to the insoluble form on freezing and aging. Not only that, the modification can also increase the stability of the food and achieve the desired viscosity of the food with minimum heating. The modification of starch can be classified into chemical modification or physical modification. Some of the examples of chemical modifications are cross-linking and acetylation. Cross-linked starch will have a higher resistance in preventing the loss of viscosity. On the other hand, acetylation starch will reduce cinerosis of food, increase viscosity, and reduce reversion rate. In addition, physical modification of starch involves the pre-gelatinization of starch by heating and drying. Pre-gelatinized starch will allow the food product to develop a food viscosity without cooking, which is convenient and easy to use. Some food products that contain pre-gelatinized starch are instant soap and baby soap. The summary of what we have learned in this video are the definition of phase transition, starch gelatinization, retrogradation, cinerosis, and modification of starch. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video.